We are working toward a proof of the optimality of Huffman codes, and we just stated this key lemma, the sibling code lemma, on the existence of a sibling code. And now let's pause for a moment and think about where we're going with the rest of the proof. So let's think about just a little example. Let's say we have some PMF, 0 0.5, 0 0.3, let's make it a little bigger, 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and then we do the usual Huffman thing. We we take the two small guys, combine them, combine those, combine those, blah, blah, blah. You've seen this tons of times. And then we label all these branches, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, and we get our code words, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. So that's what we're doing in Huffman. And more generally, we could sort of abstract this example a little bit. If we had, say, P1, and we ordered the probabilities, P1 down to Pn minus 1, and then Pn, our first step in the process is we're going to combine two minimal guys. And so we may as well do these, since they are certainly minimal. And we would get Pn minus 1 plus Pn. And then we would proceed combining and so on and so forth, dot, 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 etc. And then eventually we would come back and label these 0 and 1, and we, then we would get our code words. So note that Huffman is a recursive procedure. You know, after we did that, this first step, we just keep on doing the same thing. We take, you know, then we have a new, maybe I'll put that in a color. And after that first step, we now have a new PMF on P1 up to Pn minus 2. And then we have this thing here. So we have a new PMF. You know, it's like P1, P2, and so forth up to Pn minus 2. And the last entry is Pn minus 1 plus Pn. This is also a PMF. And we're just going to apply Huffman to this in exactly the same way as 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 we would to any probability vector. And so Huffman is this recursive procedure. So it, it's this and this recursive nature might suggest that if we're going to prove optimality, then maybe a proof by induction is the way to go. And in fact, that is precisely what we're going to do. Our plan is to show that if Huffman is optimal for this vector, if we take this new probability vector, maybe P prime, if Huffman is optimal for this, then the code obtained for the original P's is also optimal. So that will give us the necessary induction step to sort of go from something on n minus 1, uh, you know, a, a probability with n minus 1 elements to a probability uh, PMF with n elements. So the, in, the induction step will be if, if Huffman is optimal for any PMF on n minus 1 elements, then it must, then it's also optimal for any PMF on n elements. So that will be our key induction step. So in order to analyze this, this step in the process, we need to take a closer look at, at that, that step, that, that first sort of step. So let me, I'm going to make a couple definitions. We're going to make a few definitions here. And, oops, I'm messing up. I'm going to use this P prime right here. So let's cut that, paste it. And first, let's just let P be some PMF. So let P, this will be that same P right here. P1 up to Pn. And let's suppose that it, it satisfies this property that I wrote down. P1 is greater or equal to P2, and so on. It's in sort of decreasing order. And then let's let P prime be this thing, the thing that we get by adding the last two, the, the two of the, the yeah, the, the last two elements in this P vector. So we're gonna be working with this, this P and this P prime. And let's make a couple definitions here. So definition to formalize what was going on here. So given, given, oh, and maybe let me mention one other thing here about this. So to make the connection back with the sibling code lemma, this, remember a sibling code, the lengths were in non-decreasing order. The last two lengths were the same. 
and the last two code words differed only in the last bit. And this was when our probabilities were decreasing, as they are here. And so, for example, in this code right here, this is if we wrote down these code words, 10110111, then these last two code words are siblings, right? The lengths are non decreasing, the last two are equal, and they differ only in the last bit. So these these uh, these last two guys here they they happened to be siblings in this case and we're going to use the fact that there always exists such a sibling code that'll be a key part of of our proof so we're so that's sort of the connection with the siblings you can start to see how that's going to connect up with the Huffman procedure okay so what's our definition so given a sibling code given a sibling code, and let's call it C S, for S for sibling, for a sibling code for P. The H, or Huffman contraction, Huffman contraction, I'm just gonna abbreviate by H contraction, which we will denote by C to the C, C for contraction, and this is the contraction to P prime, to this P prime here is it's the code with the with the following code words the the code words are going to be exactly the same as for the original sibling code except we're going to merge the two siblings we're going to remove them and replace them by a code word that's obtained by just dropping their last bit so maybe before i formally write down what that means let's write down Let's do an example, and then I'll finish the formal definition here. So example would be, uh, I'll put it, let's put it here. So an example would be like if CS is our sibling code and CC is the contraction, let's just take this simple one here. We already know that was a sibling code. 01011101. These two are the siblings. And what we're going to do is the contraction will have all the same code words, except we're going to merge those two siblings. So we all these are the same. And now we're going to take these and just drop the last bit. Remember, because two siblings, they're the same up to the last bit. They differ only in the last bit. That was the this, this thing here. Differ only in the last bit. So we're just going to combine them. All right, so if we were to label these, maybe we could make this a little more formal. Let's call this guy WS and N minus 1. N's 4 in this case. This is WSN. This is WC, S for sibling, the sibling code, N minus 1, and so forth. So more generally, let's and by the way, this is the, the, the Huffman contraction to P prime of CS. It's the contraction of CS. Has code words. Has the following code words. So the code words are W1. The first code word of the contraction is just the same as for the sibling code and same for the second, all the way up to n minus 2 is the same, n minus 2, and then the last one, n minus 1, well, we have to add, so this is going to be plus some, you know, well, maybe it's 0, it could be 1 also, is w n minus 1 s of the sibling code, so if we appended a, a 0, we would get this guy, and if we appended a 1, we would get the other guy. Now, it could be, this might be flipped. It, this, this might happen to be a 1, this might happen to be a 0. It just depends on, you know, whether your sibling code, whether you had those last two guys in, um, you know, if the second to last one had a 0 for the last bit or, or a 1 for the last bit. We could have made that more precise to ensure, you know, in our definition of what siblings are, we could have specified that the first one has a 0, but, but it doesn't really matter. So it could be or dot 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 1. So the, the code words of the contraction, just to be clear, the, the code words are this, these C's, W1C, 
up to w n minus 1 c, and they satisfy this. All right. So this describes the the contraction process. Sort of, you know, we when we apply this, we're sort of that's sort of going in in this direction from the longer one to the shorter one. And now we have corresponding, in some sense, the opposite direction. We're going to have the extension. So we have another definition. Given before we were given an, a sibling code, and now we're just going to have any optimal code. Given an optimal code. Let's call it C CO for optimal for P prime. P prime is the PMF on N minus one elements. The H reduct, uh, or no, rather extension, sorry. Extension, H extension, the Huffman extension. Let's call it CE for extension to P. I'll put that in parentheses. The extension to p, and it, it makes a difference what p is. It's the, and it's the extension of co. It has the following code words. It has code words w1, let's call them e, up to w uh, n e. And let's likewise do an example of this one. So we this was our example before let's do an example before I write the formal thing so basically what's going to happen is we're going to just go the other way we're going to take the the n minus one code word from this optimal code here and we're just going to tack on a zero to get one more code word and a, a one to get another one so for example it, it's going to look a lot like this so it's co if co is our optimal code and C E is going to be our extension. Say for suppose, you know, suppose our optimal code was just to for for consistency, let's let's just make it the same as our previous example. So we have some optimal code here. I mean it's whatever, it's optimal for P prime. So we're su supposing that. And now we're gonna take this last code word, append a zero, and append a one. So it's just doing, just going in the reverse direction. We're taking the last code word here and we're making a pair of siblings. All right, so to finish our formal definition here as code words, blah, 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 such that W1, W1E, they're all the same, is W1O dot, 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 down to N minus two, or actually I could just, yeah, let's say, do that one n minus 2 o then we have n minus 1 of the extension is now the extension we tack on a 0 to the n minus 1th guy of our optimal code and a little more space and w n of the extension we tack on a 1 to the last code word of the optimal code for p prime p prime only had n minus 1 elements so this optimal code CO would have only had n minus one code words. And likewise up here, you know, we were going from a code on this sibling code had n code words. And then we went to one with only n minus one code words. Our contraction had n minus one. So this was going from n to n minus one, the contraction and naturally enough, the extension is going from n minus one to n. And they are just sort of reversing this this process. All right, so that's the extension and the contraction. And these are two key concepts, two key things that we're going to use. And, and how do these relate back to the Huffman code? Well, there's, you know, you may have already noticed. So we're going to when we're going to do this proof by induction, the key, the, the sort of induction step involved, we noticed that it was, it's going to involve going from this n minus 1 to, to n. So when we were thinking about the recursive nature of the Huffman algorithm, we, we noted that after this first step, we're just going to apply Huffman again, right? 
we just do the same thing again. And so, so the, the Huffman code that we get for these N guys is just going to be this, the extension of a Huffman code that we would have gotten on these N minus one guys right here on the pink circle guys. So, so the fact is, the reason why this H extension is, is useful is that any Huffman code for P is the H is the Huffman extension of a Huffman code for P prime. Let me write that down. Any Huffman code for P is the H extension of some Huffman code of a Huffman code for code for P prime. And this is with, with the convention that say we always, if we have ordered these P's in a particular way, you know, in this descending way, that we're, we're always going to take the convention that we combine the, the, the last two, the ones which are indexed n minus one and n. You know, in general, if there was more, you know, point ones in here, if this was two or something, then we could have combined these two first, but we're gonna say just for concreteness to, to concreteness of the description of the algorithm, let's just say that we combine just the ones which are indexed the last two. Obviously it makes no difference at all because you could have just, you know, permuted those um, and gotten the original, the other code, so. But it, it simplifies our notation a bit. Okay, so this is this is a nice, useful concept, right? Because now we have formalized what we need for our induction step. Our induction step is going to say if Huffman is optimal for any PMF on n minus n one elements, say p prime, then we'd like to say that Huffman is also optimal for any PMF on n elements. So p, you know, so we could take p, and then uh, if, that, if, if Huffman is optimal for any P prime, then we would just need to show that the H, that the Huffman extension preserves optimality. So we would like to say that the Huffman extension of an optimal code is also optimal. All right, so that is our next goal. That is our, our goal is to show that the Huffman extension of any optimal code for for P prime is, is optimal for P. And that, that will be the heart of the proof, the, the sort of core, the, 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 the main calculation, the main step in the proof. And we will do that next. And, and then we will finally arrive at our desired result.